Hi guys, Claire here and welcome to Brave Sculpt. So tonight you're going to need a block, a trusty block, so have that nearby. And if you really want to torture yourself, you could use some ankle weights. I'm not doing it today because I think it's hard enough without it, but if you do want, you can add them. <laughs> so the deal is we have 30 minutes. We don't have a lot of time together, so we make it pretty quick intervals. We have 30 second blocks of work. Uh, and then in this one, it's a little different to our past classes because we're going to focus on one area in the total block and repeat it twice. So it's going to be pretty burny. So just be ready. If you do feel the burn, just feel free to walk it out when you want to. Take a little break. Make sure you have some water next to you. I saw someone's just come online. So make sure you have a yoga block and ankle weights are a choice as well. So playlist is Brave Sculpt number eight. We have to start playing at the same time. So get ready. Hope that you have it open in Spotify. Three, two, one, play. Brilliant. So I love this song. I don't know about you, but this makes me really happy, this song. So we're gonna start with some bonnie hops. I forgot to say today we're focusing on animal movements, which is always fun. We're gonna bend down, touch the floor and jump up. So if this is too much, you can bend down, stand up and raise the legs, okay? So there's always something that you can do. Make sure when you're going down that your knees aren't going over your toes and you're using your glutes. You don't want to be leaning down like this, which is quite hard, but I know some people do do that. And you can even slow it down. So you're literally just squatting and raising up. This is just the warm up, so take it easy. You're welcome to go as hard or as easy as you like. Three, two, one, we stop monkey swings. So we're gonna let our arms be really heavy. I'll do it this way so you can see me and then swing down and then swing back up. Be mindful you don't do it really hard so you get into your back, it's soft, okay? So we swing down, back up. The hands can cross over as they come up and down. The point here is we're just warming up all of the shoulders, the back, the legs. Feels quite nice to let a bit of that momentum and weight. Let your body be a little soft, upper body, relaxed. Should feel nice. If it doesn't feel nice, take it slower, okay? <laughs> Beautiful. So coming into right leg, we're only doing this once. We're gonna just step back and do a really small lunge, back up and raise. We're gonna take it slow. So. You don't have to go so deep, this is just to warm up. Today we're focusing a lot on the lower body. So take this opportunity to take it slow and wake things up. When you lean back, the knee goes straight down to the ground. So we're not leaning forward so that knee goes over the front toe. So when you lean back, knee straight down, straight back up using the glutes. Five more seconds, then we do the other side. Beautiful. Left side goes back and down and raise. Back, down, step in. You can tap or you can try to go straight through if you're feeling really strong. Like I said, it's going to be burning. So let's take the opportunity to take a little break. Beautiful. And you're done. Armadillo rock and rolls, what this looks like. Been getting creative with the names. We're going to rock back and forward. And if you have the availability to rock so much that you stand up, maybe you can have a little jump as well. Rock down, over, back, maybe stand up or a jump. 30 seconds. Rock and rolls. I'm calling these armadillos because of our theme today. Feet go over the head. Now, if this doesn't feel good for your back, you can just sit down. Lay on your back and bring your knees into your chest and push yourself up and stand up in any way that feels good. Okay, 10 seconds. You don't have to do the rock and roll. Doesn't feel good for some people. And stop. We're getting into our booty. So calling this one the kangaroo, it's a jump squat. Wide legs, jump up and down, okay? So options here, sumo step each way, okay? This takes out the weight of the jump in the knees. So if your knees are not very happy, 
You don't have to do the jump. Sumo squat and step out, all right? If you want to get that heart rate up, you're going to go faster. You don't have to go as deep as your knees and not very happy. Push through those heels. Watch that those knees don't go over the toes. Five seconds. Getting the heart rate up. Beautiful. And stop. Chair pose. Suck in that lower body. Tilt the tailbone. Hands up. Raise the right foot off the floor. Balance. You got it. 30 seconds. So if this is too hard, the toe can just touch on the floor. If that's too hard, come just into an eagle or a chair, sorry. Halfway. Can you raise that foot up? We're loading through that left side. You can do it. Keep holding. Three, two, drop the foot. A little smudgy. We're not done yet. Back into chair. Lift the right foot behind you. Tap. Bring it back. Left leg stays bent. Tap, back, tap, back. Get low. Tilt the tailbone. Ten, oh, 20 seconds. Hands can be up in chair if you want. 10 seconds. Oh my God, this is going to be torturous. You got to stay with me. So close. Four seconds. Two, one. Stay where you are, a little smoogin if you need. This time we step back and we lunge down. Come back into chair. Here we go. Back, lunge, forward. But we're going to keep that left leg bent when we step in. So we're still loading through the quad on the left side. Hands can be up in chair or on your hips. Whatever feels better. Chair actually feels easier. <laughs> Stay with me. Oh, my God. Ten seconds. So the deal with this class today is to get maximum burn. Three, two, one. Oh, my God. Can you feel it? That left side is, is feeling tight. March it out. <laughs> it's not just a move. This is just felt what I felt like doing, but it feels good. I ready for the other side. We do everything twice. So sumo jumps. So squat, jump, or stepping to the side. Okay, here we go. 30 seconds. Hands can just stay in front of you. Or if you want to use a little bit of a swing, you're welcome. Gives you a little bit more momentum. Good to get those shoulders working as well. 15 seconds left. Get low with those glutes. Push through the heels. Stay with me. I know it's hard. And almost there. Five, four, three, two. Oh, my God, one. March it out. We're going to do a lot of marches today. <laughs> so left side torch in time. Chair pose. Till tailbone. Hands up. Lift that left foot up. 30 seconds. Balance. Again, if this is too much, put the, the tip of the toe on the floor to take off some of the weight. Or normal chair. Otherwise, try and lift the foot. Point the toe behind you. You're doing great. 10 seconds. We're getting that burn. We're getting that heart rate up. Definitely sounded less hard in my head. <laughs> Stay with me. Foot taps behind, in, back, in. Right leg stays bent. We do not straighten that right leg. Tap, in. 15 seconds, double time. Back, back, back. Stay with me, we're so close. Five, four, three, two, one. Stay. Little shimmy out if you want. Bend through the legs, chair. Step back. Come down. Here we go. 30 seconds. Now, that right leg does not go straight. We're stepping in and back. Knees are bent. Load the quads. Load the glutes. 
that is where the burn is. If you're straightening your legs, this will not feel as challenging. Oh my Lord, 10 seconds. Five seconds. Don't stop. Oh my God, think of those buns of steel on the beach and stop. Oh, march. Oh my God. Maybe a little shimmy if you want. Whatever feels good. Shake out the quads. The glutes and the quads are going to be really burning after that one. So, a little bit more fun torture with you, the animals. Back to eagle. So, or, so with eagle, it's a chair, but we bring that right leg over and right arm under. So I was preparing for you with this. Went for the one-footed chair. This is a little easier because you're using your legs to help you. But we're going to hold. Get deep into the legs. Squeeze them together. Squeeze your arms together. This starts to bite because it's long. You're halfway. Get lower. Squeeze a little more. That right foot can come out to the side and touch the floor if you're struggling. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh my gosh, undo the legs. Walk it out for a second. Come back to our trusty chair. This time we're going out to the side. So we lift the right foot out, tap, back. Option to grab a weight, bend your elbow and raise it out and in. Out, in. Here we go. 30. We don't play around. Then it's time to dirty. We know how to get it down. Ross said I shouldn't leave my day job. <laughs> I can't sing, but I love this song. I'm so torn. I should be honest. I, sh I wish I could sing this. No, 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 no. We're definitely going to get a nice ass after this workout. <laughs> you can do double time. If you're feeling nasty, Look a bit like a chicken as well. <laughs> oh my god, I crack myself up. Just hold it. Five seconds left. And stop. Walk it out. Come down to the floor. Bridges. Bridge pulses. Bridge one leg pulses. Come down, tickle the backs of the heels to make sure you're in the right spot. Lift the hips up. Interlace hands behind you, push them into the floor, open the chest. Pulses. When it's pulsing straight up, 30 seconds. Tilt the tailbone. Make sure you're using the glutes to extend your hips to the roof. Push up your body, your body next to mine. You can definitely, this song really matches the pelvic thrust. <laughs> Baby, shake that ass. All right, keep holding. Got five more seconds. Make them little pulses at the top. Makes it a little harder. All right, you're done. Not quite yet. Left foot into the center. Right foot bent or straight pointed toe. 30 seconds. Pulse. Just the top. We're not lowering the booty to the floor. We're just pulsing at the very top. So if this is too much, bend the knee. If you want more, point through the toe. Oh my God. You can do it. You have five seconds. Stay with me. There we go. We're done. Lower the legs. Lower the booty. Bring the knees in. Little rock and roll. We go back to the start. Rock and roll forward and back. Jump up. Here we go. Baby, shake that ass. Come down, eagle. So this time, left leg over. Left arm under. From this way, it looks like this. Tilt the tailbone, just checking the time. 30 seconds. You want to make sure that your elbows, your arms are pushing into each other. If you can't do the bend over, just have your arms together like this. If the twist doesn't feel good, don't stop. It's your phone. <laughs> Get a little lower. Squeeze a little more. Five seconds. Smile as well. Makes it hurt less. And you're done. Shake it out. Just for a second. Chair. So chair was sitting down like on that imaginary chair, tilting the tailbone to stop that dump in the lower back. And out to the side. This time we're doing the left. So out, in, out, 
in option for weight, bend the elbow. Here we go, 30 seconds out, in. So we're using the abductor muscles in the legs that take the femur out to the side of the body and also the glute minimus and medius as well. So not the glute max, is what, that's what we've been working our other movements. So if you wanna make it harder, you can even just go out to the side and back without tapping. That's going to bring in your ch challenge of balance. Five seconds. Stay deep into that right knee. Keep bent. Two, one, and stop. Bridge hip raises. Oh, yes, we do this again. <laughs> so tickle backs of hips. Prepare. Come into normal bridge. Raise the hips up. So pulses. We just do little pulses, 30 seconds. So make sure you're pushing through your heels and you're really engaging those glutes. You're welcome to give a little poke and make sure they're working or even grab the booty and just feel if you can actually feel it engaging. The quads are working, but the main movement is happening in those glutes. Tilt the tailbone to make it work. Make sure you're not just overloading your quads and not using the booty. Five seconds. I mean, they're gonna be able to tell who's really using their booty in a second. The next one, you can't cheat. So, right foot into the center of the body, left knee into the chest, option to stay there or point the toe, 30 seconds. Push through that right heel. Now, if you push through the right heel, that right glute is forced to work. So the quad, if you're quad dominant, you're really gonna to start to feel the glutes, it's gonna burn. You're halfway. That toe goes straight up to the roof. Oh my Lord. 10 seconds. I know it hurts. Stay with me. Five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Ah, oh, bend the knee. Bring the knees in. A little rock and roll from side to side. Oh my gosh. I told you I'd be working those glutes. Move back and forward. Come up to standing. Actually, no, let's stay down, we'll stay down. So roll onto your belly, onto the floor. We're now gonna work the back, which often gets neglected in yoga, um, which is why we, in these classes, focus on back and glutes. So, locust pose. You'll know this one is lifting up the chest and then gently folding down. We're gonna repeat this movement just up and down, okay? 30 seconds. Starting from now. So we roll up the up, roll the shoulders back. Chin can be just towards the chest, looking towards the floor. Exhale to come down. Inhale, raise up, raise the hands up off the floor, palms towards the floor. Exhale to come towards the ground. Inhale, roll the, the shoulders, open the chest, squeeze those shoulders together. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale to rise up and exhale down. Using that upper back, squeezing the glutes at the top. And you're done. Bow pose. Flex the toes, bring the feet in towards the body. We're going to reach back, but not actually grab the heels. And we're going to squeeze the glutes and try to raise those quads off the floor. So we're pushing the hips into the floor. Exhale to lower. Open the chest and just focus on the glutes, trying to raise them up. So chin towards chest, look towards floor. If you want further activation, you can lift the chest as well. Squeeze the glutes, push the hips into the floor. We're just using the strength of the glutes to pull the legs up. Toes are flexed. Oh my gosh. Really active. Five seconds. So much harder than your normal bow and stop. Hands under the head, windscreen wipe the legs from side to side. So this is a back bend, but also a lot of work of the back. So it's an active pose into a back bend, not passive. We'll come into Sphinx for a second. So we stack the elbows and shoulders, open the chest. This is very passive. We're about to make it active. Squeeze the glutes and have a play with coming down a little bit and lifting your hands up, but keeping your elbows into the floor. Squeeze your glutes a little more. Roll the chest open, chin towards chest. Keep squeezing your glutes more and more and more to make that back bend not as intense and not dumping into the bones. Lower those hands. Maybe seal pose. You can come into seals. We're going to straighten the arms. This is going to get us ready 
for something fun called a swan swing in Pilates. If you know what it is, you know what's coming. We're going to come back down into our sphinx. Remember all of the things I've been telling you, so squeeze the glutes. We're going to come up back into that one, and we're going to make sure the head is back, and we're going to swing open, yeah? So swing and back. So you can come into this normal sphinx for this, but you need to squeeze the glutes and raise up the legs. Here we go. 30 seconds. Three, two, one. Swing up. Swing so the point of this is we're using our glutes and all of our back body is really tight and it's active, okay? And it's getting you into a back bend, but from strength, not flexibility, it's hard. Three, two, one. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Come up onto your knees, sit onto your heels, have a straight back. <sighs> as we just let that sink in before we do it again. So you're likely to feel a little sore in your back tomorrow, but it's not going to be from hurting your bones. It's going to be from muscles because we're working very, very specific parts of the back and we're doing it twice. So it's going to feel a little sensitive tomorrow, but that's okay. That's quite normal. Um, and if they did feel too much, just take it easy for the next one. So locust. This time... Instead of just raising the chest, we're going to raise the double legs as well. If it's too much, just come into normal locus and then take a break when you need. 30 seconds. Here we go. So we're going to take a breath in, raise up. You're welcome to hold this for a couple of seconds. And then to come down, rest the right cheek on the floor. Inhale, come up. Exhale, down. Rest the left cheek on the floor. Inhale, come up, squeeze those glutes. Use those glutes to raise the legs up. That is the key here. Inhale to open the chest, use the glutes, use the back. Exhale. Inhale. I know it's hard. Five more seconds. And you're done. Bow pose. So with bow, come down onto your arms so your hands can be beside your face. Bend your elbows. Now bend your knees. Push your hips into the floor, and we're just going to focus on lifting the glutes up, so lifting the legs up. Here we go, 30 seconds. So heels go towards the roof. Glutes raise. Lower back is happy because you're just using those glutes. This is more important in bow than anything else. So when you come into your next bow pose, you're going to know that the booty needs to work more than anything rather than coming into a bow pose passively by using your arms to pull your legs forward. That's flexibility. This is strength. Oh, my God. And you're done. Oh. Sphinx pose. Take it passive. So elbows stacked under your shoulders. Open the chest. Squeeze the glutes now. Feel the difference. Release the glutes. Your back sinks to the floor. It feels I actually feel a bit of tension in my lower back, crunching. When I squeeze my glutes, I feel happier. So really active through the back. Roll the shoulders back. Engage the shoulders. Maybe come up into a seal. This is going to prepare you for our swan swing. Lift the feet. Activate the feet. 30 seconds. Swan swings. Go. So if this doesn't feel good, you can come into a normal bow or you can come into a child's pose until we're done and just take a little rest. This is definitely going to get your back really active and your glutes. This is something that in yoga we definitely don't do enough of. So it will feel challenging. Three, two, one. Oh my gosh. Beautiful. Sit onto your knees. Let your back be straight. Take a breather. So we're going to realign this. We've done a lot of back work, and now our core is probably a lot more less engaged than our back. So we're going to lay down onto our back, bring the knees over the hips. So the more that you take your knees away from your body, the easier it is. Sorry, the more you bring your knees into your body, the easier it is for your abs. So your knees are out. So just stacked over the hips, flex the toes, hands go into onto this, the quads. Now try to straighten your arms. So you're pushing your legs away from your body and your core is forced to activate. Make sure that lower back is not curving up. Tilt the tailbone down, keep pushing. 
Yep, 30 seconds here. Whew. Make sure you keep tilting the tailbone, squeeze the glutes, flex the toes, chin is just into chest, long neck. Keep pushing into those quads. Watch that lower back. Breathe. Five, four, three, two, and one. Lower the legs. Windscreen wipe from side to side. Because we're doing um, our animals, we're going to bend the knees in, straighten the legs out to the side. So this one's a dead bug. And we're going to place our hands on the inside of our thighs. And as we exhale, we're going to push against our thighs and try to pull our legs in with our strength. So we're fighting our own strength. Hands on the outsides, push against your legs, and then try to open your legs. So you're using arms and legs here. 30 seconds. Hands in, push against your thighs and pull your legs in with your strength. Hands out, open the legs. <laughs> I don't want nobody, baby. Hands in. Point through those toes and bring those legs in. You should be shaking. Using that opposite movement. Five, four, three, two, one. Whew. Grab a block. Place a block onto your knee. Place your elbow onto the block. Push them together. Flex the toe or point the toe, whatever feels better. Right hand goes behind neck and head. Inhale, lengthen through left leg and left arm. Exhale, knee towards elbow. Inhale out, exhale in. Inhale out, it'll start to bite soon, don't worry. So 30 seconds. Really when you exhale, push that elbow and knee into each other and make them have tension towards each other to activate through that lower abs. You're halfway. Inhale to open, exhale to close. Inhale, open, exhale, close. We reactivate that core. And stop. Grab the block, place it between your hands. Take a breath in. And we're going to exhale, lift the block over the knees and back down. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, 30 seconds. So at any point, if this feels too much for the neck, it feels quite a lot, place one hand behind the neck and head. Block up and down. Halfway. You can do it. You can do it. Up, down, up, down. And stop. To make sure we're even, left knee in, block onto the elbow, elbow <laughs> onto the knee, and then elbow into the block. So we're pushing the knee towards the elbow and the elbow towards the knee. Left hand behind neck and head, reach through the left arm and the left leg, exhale, knee into touch. So 30 seconds. <sighs> make sure that lower back does not come off the floor. Now the trick here is it creates stability in the back, is pushing the elbow into the block and the block into the knee. What that does is make sure the lower back does not come off the floor and the glutes and core activate. So make sure that push into the block does not get sloppy. That is going to hold your pelvis stable whilst you work your abs. Inhale, open. Exhale, in. And stop. Oh, you survived. Well done, guys. Bring the knees into the chest. Give yourself a little hug. A little rock and roll from side to side gently. Both knees go over to the left and keep the chest open towards the roof. <sighs> Inhale to centre. Exhale, both knees over towards the right. So twisting through that lower back. Coming back to centre, straighten through the left leg. The right knee comes tight in towards the body. Exhale over the top of the body for supine twist. Oh, that feels awesome. So we've done a lot of lower body work. We did a lot of back work. And then we evened it out by doing the core so that our body is nice and stable and even. Come back to centre. Straighten out through the right leg. Bend that left knee in towards the chest and exhale over the top of the body, supine twist. 
in yoga, we're doing a lot of push exercises. So sometimes our back needs a little bit of extra TLC and strength. So doing those locust movements and back bends from strength are really important. Coming back to centre, your option, you can come up to a little snail if you want, if this is something that you are capable and like to do, or a shoulder stand. A snail is just bringing the knees in towards the chest and relaxing, coming into an inversion. If you're in your shoulder stand and you want to come into plough, you're welcome, but you might not feel quite warm enough. If this doesn't feel good for you, just come down onto your knees and hug your knees into your body and round through your back. It's just very similar. It just takes that pressure off the head and the neck. And you're done. Yay. You survived. That was harder than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> so well done. Um, and maybe some of you will be coming to the next class. So hopefully see you there and have a really good night and hopefully see you next week. And feel free to follow us on Instagram and say hi or shoot us an email if you have any questions. We love you guys and hope to see you soon in person in the park um, or in the studio towards later in the year. Bye. <laughs>